The first things first about me. So I'm Ashok. I did my masters from IIT Kharagpur. As of now, I'm working as an assistant professor at IBS International Institute of Business Studies. I have authored about three books for UPSC Civil Services Examination in the areas of science and technology and ecology. So those books are available online. So if you want to purchase, feel free to purchase. So, and I'm the head faculty of Kartika Ice Academy. And I'm the guest faculty for many other institutions. And the subjects I usually take are from the general studies, science and technology, ecology, international relations, and internal security. And for the optional, I teach anthropology optional. So let's go to the syllabus explanation. Anthropology, paper one. So as you might be aware that every optional is divided into two parts paper 1 and paper 2 and that comprises of about 250 marks so optional itself encompasses for about 500 marks and because you're choosing that optional that becomes a very crucial part in scoring the rest of the GS is common for everyone but the optional makes the difference so choose wisely and also in the recent times the anthropology optional was chosen by most of the aspirants because of limited syllabus and ease of understanding and it is uh, the scoring is uh, very large the first part we have the meaning scope and development of anthropology the meaning scope and development of anthropology and the anthropology relationship with other disciplines like history economy sociology psychology political sciences life sciences and medical sciences when it comes to anthropology optional, please stick to the syllabus. So what is specified, you just go through it. So for the anthropology, the meaning of anthropology, scope of anthropology and development of anthropology and its relationship with the other disciplines. So this is the first part which we have. And it also specified that the relationship with respect to these subject areas only don't go for others okay so that is the most important thing and as you can see relationship with other disciplines anthropology is multidisciplinary in nature it is linked with every other area you will see the anthropology by definition right so for the people who doesn't know this anthropology optional so for them i have put a few slides to explain about anthropology and the concept of anthropology anthropology by definition is a discipline of infinite curiosity about human beings anthrop means human ology is study so we are dealing with study of human beings right so this is what is being told it's a discipline of infinite curiosity about human beings. So humans are the evolved organisms on the earth whose intellect is unparalleled. But how did they come into existence? So what is the course of action that had happened over the history that led humans humans? Right? So this is what anthropology deals with. So how the culture has been formed. So how the humans have become so complex so how the civilizations has been formed so what are the institutions that were established by the humans right all things are studied in anthropology it is a discipline that studies humans focusing on study of differences and similarities the humans have been associated with entire world so they were scattered across the globe but the humans present in this geographical area were totally different from the other geographical area so and at the same time there are similarities as well so what are those similarities and what are those differences this is what being studied and that is studied both biologically as well as culturally so asian might be different from an african caucasian might be different from some other racial uh, identity so those differences and similarities are actually studied in anthropology and anthropology is concerned with typical biological and cultural characteristics of human populations of all periods and in all parts of the world. So here we are talking about 
the typical biological and cultural characteristics of human population of all periods that means right from the human existence right we have been evolved from the primates primates to homo sapiens so whatever the intermediaries that were present so we study about everything humans of all times and from all the parts of the world so this is what anthropology specifically deals with now the scope of anthropology so when you talk about the scope of anthropology it deals with right both geographically as well as historically as we already discussed here of all periods that means it is talking about historical aspects and of all past it is talking about geographical aspects and anthropologists are interested in all varieties of people in every part of the world so there are a few communities that were totally uh, unaware of the world how it is developed they are the primitive societies so even the anthropologists study them right so every human being across the entire world is studied under anthropology anthropologists are interested in the people of all periods from millions of years ago to the present and the broader scope of anthropology is required to confirm that any suggested generalization about human beings any explanation of some characteristics of human culture or biology is applicable to many times and places of human existence not just limited group right so when you are talking about the broader scope right so we are comparing two different societies two different people two different cultures right and we are trying to ascertain the similarities as well as the differences so may it be the biological or may it be the cultural right this is the scope of anthropology it is so vast and the next part deals with the main branches of anthropology so what branches of anthropology are to be studied for optional so socio cultural anthropology biological anthropology archaeological anthropology and linguistic anthropology the four branches of anthropology four main branches of anthropology social cultural which specifically deals with the cultural aspects of anthropology biological right which deals about the interior of human body and archaeological right remains and linguistic the language so you can see here socio cultural anthropology the study of how and why the cultures in the past and present vary or are similar in terms of the ways that a particular population or society thinks and behaves if you are talking about one kind of a society so how the culture has actually developed so why two different societies cultures are same or why they are different right so if they are different so where well, did they come from the common uh, common culture or they have parallelly evolved so what is the basis of that culture so what is their belief system right everything comes under socio cultural anthropology biological anthropology the next part it is the question about the emergence of humans and their later evolution and about how and why contemporary human populations vary biologically right so as i already explained the african american so asian right so these all people look totally different right the morphologically or the physiologically they are different so what makes them different right so how they have actually evolved into that diverse groups so that is studied biologically right and archaeological anthropology so focuses on the past human cultures through the analysis of the material remains so the only way we could actually talk about the human existence is through the fossil remains so we are able to establish that the humans have evolved from these intermediaries is only because of the fossil remains so archaeological anthropology deals with those material remains and it establishes how the human cultures or the humans have evolved both biologically as well as culturally the linguistic anthropology it focuses on human languages past and present including the cultural context in which language is used and the ways in which language social uh, the language social life and culture are intertwined right so what it is talking about the languages 
past as well as present how the languages have evolved right so previously there was only sound there was no language there are no alphabets there is no script so how everything how the language has actually developed right so how was it connected to the cultural aspect as well right and we have to discuss the ways in which the language social life and culture are intertwined both or how both are together because when you are talking about the language we take it as a part of culture and the culture is associated with the language so how they are interconnected so this is what we study in the main branches of anthropology and next we study about human evolution and emergence of man human evolution so we already discussed that so anthropology itself is about the human beings since the beginning so we as uh, we say of all times so how they have actually evolved so the primates the previously before the continental drift they used to be together and once the continental drift happened so they were separated into the old world monkeys and the new world monkeys and the old world monkeys evolved into the humans so how it actually happened so this is what we going to study right so in this we study about biological and cultural factors of human evolution theories of organic evolution right so previously so we believed in creationism so there is supreme power which created everything and later we started to believe because of the fossil remains or because of the scientific evidences we started to believe in the organic evolution so what are those different theories of organic evolution pre darwinian darwinian and post darwinian and we discuss about synthetic theory of evolution right and brief outline of terms and concept of evolutionary biology so about dolls rules scopes rules gauss rules parallelism convergence adaptive radiation and mosaic evolution so how we all have evolved how different races have evolved there is no pure race by the way so we going to study in other concept right how we are biologically different why we are culturally different so all these concepts of evolution from one species to the other species comes under this human evolution and emergence of man the next characteristics of primates so when you are talking about characteristics of primates of our ancestors or of us what are the basic characteristics we have right so we study about the characteristics of the primates so different primates what is the body structure how the skull was so how the facial structure is what is the brain composition so how the backbone so whether they are bipedal or so uh, they are uh, they walked on four legs right so are they arboreal or different so all these characteristics of the primates comes into this question right and we discuss about evolutionary trend and primate taxonomy taxonomy is nothing but naming of the primates taxonomy is nothing but naming of the primates okay and primate adaptations whether they are arboreal or terrestrial arboreal means whether they used to live on the trees or on the land so primate taxonomy primate behavior tertiary and quaternary fossil primates and living major primates which are already living and comparative anatomy of man and apes so the apes so we have evolved from the apes so what is the comparative anatomy so how similar they are how different they are so that comparative anatomy and skeletal changes due to the erect posture and its implications so when you compare to the other animals we walk on two limbs so because of the skeletal changes right so because of the erect posture so what implications does it bring to the human beings so this is what is being studied in characteristics of primates and the next we study about phylogenetic status so phylogenetic status means evolutionary tree so when they evolved how they diverged or how they converged so everything the phylogenetical analysis through the history from the beginning till today is actually studied in the phylogenetic status so in this we study phylogenetic status characteristics and geographical distribution of the following what right so pleo pleistocene hominids in south and east africa australopithecines right so we discuss about homo erectus and we discuss about neanderthal man we discuss about rhodesian man and we discuss about homo sapiens and the other subspecies as well right 
So we discuss about how different species of humans since the ancestral times have evolved and how they are linked together. So which came first? Who are the intermediaries? Who are the present human population? So this is what is being studied in the phylogenetic status. Right? So as you can see, Diaropithecus, the earliest known ancestor of the man. Australopithecus, they were about 1.2 meters tall and could walk upright. And they were inhabited the African mainland. Homo habilis, they were about 5 feet tall and could make use of tools. Homo erectus, they were more evolved. So erectus, they were completely erect. They were also upright and had larger brain size. And Homo sapiens, these are we. We are Homo sapiens. They are the modern man. They developed the power of thinking, used tools where omnivores and produced art. The brain was reduced to about 1300 cc. Right? So these are the different humans who have evolved over time to create or to exist for the existence of Homo sapiens. And the next one, we discuss about the biological basis of life. Right? So what is the basis of life? So how the life has actually come into the existence on the earth. The earth was actually formed about 4.5 billion years ago. And the life on the earth has actually started about 3.5 billion years ago. So what is the basis of that formation of life? Right? So in this we study about the cell, DNA structure and replication, the basic biology part. And we discuss about protein synthesis and the genes. And we discuss about mutation chromosomes and cell division. So the basic fundamental aspects of biology are discussed in this biological basis of life. And we discuss about the principles of prehistoric archaeology. Prehistoric archaeology. It is a part of archaeological anthropology. You can figure it out. Right? So in this we discuss principles of prehistoric archaeology. Right? So, when you are talking about prehistoric archaeology, how can you establish that this fossil remain had been established during this particular time? How can you definitely say that this fossil remains are from that particular time? So, that is what the archaeological evidences are. So, that is what archaeological analysis is. So, for that, we use relative and absolute dating methods relative as well as absolute dating methods. So we discuss in detail about these dating methods, their advantages as well as the disadvantages. And also we study cultural evolution and broad outlines of prehistoric cultures. In this, we discuss about Paleolithic era, Mesolithic, Neolithic, Chacolithic, Copper Bronze and Iron Age. Right? So all these things you will be studying in ancient history as well. And the next, we discuss about the nature of culture. So how the culture has been formed. So what is culture? How it has actually formed? How it has become complex? Right? What are the different aspects of culture? Right? So all these things are discussed. The nature of culture. In this we discuss the concept and characteristics of culture and civilization. And we discussed about ethnocentrism and cultural relativism. Right? How the culture is totally linked. So, how? For the ethnic aspects, the culture is an intrinsic factor. Right? So, as you can see, the definitions of culture, the culture is the man-made part of the environment. The culture is not the content of social life, but it is an order and organization of social life. And we can see the other definition given by Malinowski. The culture comprises of inherited artifacts, goods, technical processes, ideas, habits and values. Everything comprises of culture. Right? And you can see uh, the other definition by Edward is the complex whole which includes knowledge, belief, art, morals, law, custom and any other capabilities and habits acquired by man as a member of the society. So the complex is so large. It's a, the culture is so large. Right? It is more complex. It is not just the, just the basic the rules that we follow, right? It is about how we think, how we act, what law we follow, right? So what, what capabilities do we have? What habits do we have? So what ideas have evolved over the time? So everything is a part of culture. The next is about the nature of society, right? So in this, the nature of society, we discussed about the concept of society. So what is a society, right? Not to be confused. Right? 
so and we discuss about how the society and culture are linked right and we discuss about social institutions we discuss about social groups and we discuss about social stratification so varna system social stratification so different social group either it can be religious groups or anything social institution marriage is a social institution right religion is a social institution so all these different aspects of society are studied under this nature of society we discuss about marriage social institution so we discuss about the definition and universality of the marriage the laws of the marriage right so whether it is endogamy or exogamy or hypergamy or hypogamy or incestable and we discuss about the type of the marriage so whether it is a monogamy polygamy polyandry or the group marriages so how do you go for marry so most of for your insight i am telling you so most of the indians believe that they are monogamous so they marry only one individual so the but technically the most of the indians follow serial polygamy it is one after the other so if the wife or the husband dies they go for marrying again so that is what we call serial polygamy the monogamy is the mating only one individual for the entire lifetime that is what the monogamy is so what type of marriage system that existed in our society and we discuss about the functions of marriage different functions of marriage what is the purpose of the marriage what functions does it do and we discuss about marriage regulations whether they are preferential prescriptive or proscriptive and we discuss about the marriage payments bride wealth and dowry so all these concepts are discussed in the marriage and we discussed about family right so in this family social institution we discuss about definition and universality of the family we discuss about the family household and domestic groups and functions of the family types of family and impact of urbanization industrialization and feminist movements on family because the previously the families used to be joined and now they have become isolated they have become nuclear right so that is an impact of urbanization the most of the rural people are migrating to the urban areas right in search of resources in search of livelihood right so because of that so what impact has it been on the family so it started here and the next one kinship right so kinship is nothing but how are you related right so we have two different types so consanguinity and affinity so whether you are related by blood or by marriage right so this is what is discussed in the kinship so we discussed about the principles and the types of the descent right so how the progeny how the descent is happening either it is unilineal double bilateral and amilineal and the forms of the descent groups lineage clan fratry moiety and kinder kinder and we discussed about the kinship terminology whether it is descriptive or classificatory and we discussed about descent filiation and complementary filiation and descent and alliance alliance right as you can see types of kinship groups the family is a group consisting of the close relatives and these relatives are known as kins the kinship is the relationship between the persons by blood or by marriage right you can be linked either by blood or by marriage this method of uh, it is a method of reckoning relationship this is what the kinship is right and we also discussed about the economic organization so most of the anthropologists believe the economic organization has been there since the very beginning but the few believe that it has come later so few believe the culture evolution was has actually started with economic organization right so what is this economic organization so what is the meaning of it the scope relevance of economic anthropology and so we discussed about the formalist as well as substantivist debate so how economic organization has played a very important role for the evolution of the mankind right so that debate was there between the formalist as well as substantivist and we discussed about the principles governing the production distribution exchange right so we discussed about production distribution and exchange in the communities subsisting on hunting and gathering fishing swedening pastoralism horticulture agriculture and we discussed about globalization and indigenous economic systems so everything about the economic organization of the societies are discussed so when you are talking about anthropology 
just because I am using the term society, that doesn't mean that we are studying only the present day societies. We also study the primitive societies as well. Right? So, the study of present day societies is dealt with the sociology. The study of the primitive societies is actually dealt with anthropology. And the anthropology draws the comparative analysis between the past societies as well as the present day societies and it understands how the people have actually evolved, how the culture has actually evolved. And the next, we discussed about political organization and the social control. Political organization and social control. So, what are the political organizations we have? Band, tribe, chapdom, kingdom, state. Right? So, it started with a small group of people, band. It ended with the state, country, the nation. Right? So, as you can see, the concepts of power, authority and legitimacy, how it has evolved. So, what is the social control, law and justice in the simple societies or the primitive societies, right? So, how it has actually prevailed. So, all this is actually studied as you can see in the band. The mode of subsistence is food collecting, hunters and gatherers. Community size is very small. The social differentiation, it is egalitarian. Everybody used to participate. And major forms of distribution is the reciprocity, the barter system. So, when it comes to the state, you can see the difference. We follow intensive agriculture. And the community size, we have cities and the towns. And the social differentiation, we have the castes and the classes. And the forms of distribution is a market system. So it is totally different from the of the band. And from the band, we have developed gradually to form the state. So this political organization and social control is studied. The next is the religion, another social institution, right? So, we discuss here how the religions has actually uh, formed. So, what are the theories which we have, right? In this, we study anthropological approaches to study of religion, evolutionary, psychological and functional, right? And we discuss about monotheism and the poly polytheism. So, how it actually started, right? Monotheism, how it started, polytheism, how it started, right? We discuss about sacred and profane. So, what is considered sacred, what is considered profane? So, we discuss about myths and rituals, right? What are the myths we have? So, what are the rituals that are being followed, right? So, how they have actually evolved. And we discuss about forms of religion in tribal as well as the present society, peasant societies, right? And in this, we discuss animism, animatism, fetishism, naturism, and totism, right? Different aspects of religion. And we discuss about religion, magic, and science distinguished. So, how the magic and science are totally different, right? And we discussed about magical religious functionaries, right? So, about the priests, right? Or shaman, medicine man, sorcerer, witch. So, whatever the names we actually call, right? So, magical religious functionaries. These are called the magical religious functionaries. So, how are they affecting? So, how they have actually come? So, why people started to believe them, right? So, all these aspects of religion are studied in anthropology. And different anthropological theories. For you, I am giving you the insight. Anthropological theories are a bit confusing because most of the theories look similar and the most of the thinkers as well as anthropologists names are actually involved over that. So, you will have to spend significant amount of time in understanding and contemplating anthropological theories. Right? So, as per the syllabus of UPSC, right? So, what anthropological theories do we have? Right? We have classical evolutionism by the anthropologists, right? Historical particularism, functionalism, structuralism, culture and personality, neo evolutionism, cultural materialism, symbolic and interpretive theories, cognitive theories, and postmodernism, right? These are the different theories, anthropological theories we discuss, right? So the next one culture, language, and communication. Culture, language and communication right so what is the nature and origin and characteristics of language so how it has actually formed so how verbal and nonverbal communication started so what is the social context of language use why do we use the language right so what is the social context of using the language so this is studied here right the next concept we discussed about research methodologies in anthropology what research methods do we use 
do we use the field work or we don't go to the field so how do we uh, compare the two different societies on what basis do we take so if you're talking about the uh, dissimilarities how do you address those dissimilarities right so all this research methodologies are discussed so here we discuss the field work tradition in anthropology distinction between the technique method and methodology tools of data collection observation interview schedules questionnaire and case study genealogy life history oral history secondary sources of information and participatory methods so different types of data collection which we have so you can just observe them and you can write it you can interview them you can go for schedules you can design a questionnaire right so you can uh, learn through life history or the oral history the people the few stories are orally told but you don't really have that in books right so all that uh, all those important aspects are used for the data collection to understand the societies and how the analysis is done how interpretation is done and presentation of the data is done so all these things are studied and the next concept is human genetics right human genetics and again we go to the core of biology part right here we discuss about methods and application right for the study of genetic principles of man family study right so it is pedigree analysis string study so uh, it actually studies about how the genetical structure even though it might be similar how two individuals can be totally different right or depending upon even though the genetics are different so depending upon the persons brought up how they can be similar how they can be different so all this actually studied over here right so we study about the co-twin method cytogenic uh, genetic method chromosomal and biochemical methods immunological methods dna technology and recombinant technology right and we discussed about mendelian genetics in family uh, fam man family study and we discussed about single factor multi factor lethal sublethal and polygenic inheritance of man right so how the inheritance is actually done so how the lethal genes are being inherited from one individual to the other offspring right so all these aspects of human genetics are actually studied and the concept of genetic polymorphism polymorphism means how different are we when uh, when you talk about the dna so recently we have got the dna fingerprinting bill so that is being used to identify the crime uh, the uh, the criminal right during the crime scenes right for the faster dispersal of justice so when you're talking about genetic polymorphism even though in all the humans across the world about 99.9% of the genetic material or the dna is same so there is 0.1% which is completely unique that it, uh, to that individual so we call that genetic polymorphism unless the individuals are homozygotic twins right so what is this concept of genetic polymorphism and what is selection and we discuss about mendelian population hardy weinberg la and causes and changes which bring down frequency mutation isolation migration selection in breeding and genetic drift so all these are thoroughly biological so we going to discuss everything in our sessions consanguineous and non consanguineous mating right between the blood related and between non blood related so what is the genetic load genetic effect and consanguineous and the cousin marriages as you can see right so uh, the mother's brother sometimes uh, we say the uncle will be marrying so during that cases right the children being born there are greater chances of inbreeding depression which might result in the genetic abnormalities right but the marriage between the cousin sisters is not that disastrous so how why is that right all these concepts are actually discussed over here and chromosomes and chromosomal aberrations in man and methodology so as you can see the chromosomes within the cells right so the chromosomes uh, no system in the world is 100% efficient the same way with the human body so there are many chromosomal aberrations sometimes there will be mismatches there will be one extra chromosome there will be no chromosome so because of these chromosomes so what genetic abnormalities do we have right so we have chromosomal aberrations in man and methodology so numerical and structural aberrations disorders right 
we have sex chromosome uh, uh, sex chromosomal aberrations as well as autosomal aberrations right so these are the aberrations klinefelter turner super female intersex and other syndromic disorders and we have autosomal uh, aberrations autosomes means non sex chromosomes right so autosomes we have 22 pairs and we have sex chromosomes one pair xx or xy right so autosomes we have down syndrome put out edward and credichard syndrome and we have genetic imprints in human diseases genetic screening genetic counseling human dna profiling gene mapping and genome study right so genetic imprints in the human disease how genetic mutations cause the diseases so how do you screen them how do you counsel so what is this how do we actually profile the dna so how do you sequence the dna so what gene mapping and genomic studies we have so everything is studied and the next about the race and the racism so you might know about the holocaust world war ii where, where the nazis killed jews right so because of the racial differences even now right so there are many areas the many parts of the world where they face extreme racism right so what is this concept of race and what is racism right so in this we study the biological basis of morphological variation for non-metric and metric characteristics right so what is the biological basis that we are different right what is the racial criteria racial traits in relation to the hereditary and environment so based upon the environment the racial differences comes if the sunlight is high in the geographical area i'm living in i'll be darker because of the secretion of melanin right so how it is linked to the hereditary as well as with the environment and what is the biological basis of racial classification and racial differentiation and race crossing in man so this is all studied for your information there is no pure race there is no pure breed in the entire world the age sex and population variation so when you're talking about age sex and population variation as a genetic marker abo rh blood hla and transferring gm blood enzymes so all these things the population variation so we have the entire things are different in our blood right how are we different so what are the factors that actually made those things differ and the next we discuss about the uh, cycle uh, physiological characteristics of hb levels body fat pulse rate respiratory functions sensory perceptions right and how is it different cultural and socioeconomic groups in different uh, cultural and socioeconomic groups right so this is what is studied and concepts of concepts and methods of ecological anthropology right so we already know about the ecological aspects and its importance and how ups is specifically focusing uh, focusing on ecological importance because we need to protect our world we have only one home right so we discussed about ecological anthropology the biocultural adaptations genetic and non-genetic factors man physiological response to the environmental stress right and hot deserts cold and high altitude climate so for all these aspects how the physio physical physiological response of the man depend upon how are they different how do they vary right all these aspects are studied so most of these concepts are very easy right so you will be able to understand and it is very interesting as a way so epidemiological anthropology epidemiological in the sense diseases right diseases right epidemiological anthropology here we discuss about discuss about health and the disease infectious and non-infectious diseases and nutritional deficiency and uh, related diseases and we discuss about concept of human growth and development here we discuss about the stages of growth prenatal natal infant childhood adolescent maturity and senescence from the birth to the death and we discuss about the factors affecting the growth and development both genetic environmental biochemical nutritional cultural and socio-economic every aspect that is affecting the growth and development of the individual we discuss about aging and senescence right and we discuss about different theories and observations about biological and chronological longevity and human physique and somatotypes so what kind of body structure do you have and methodologies for growth studies so everything is studied demographic theory right demography the population census 
right? So about the people, relevance of menarche, menopause, right? So when does the uh, the menstrual cycle starts and when does it stop and why does it stop, right? So the why events of fertility and fertility patterns and differentials. And we discuss about demographic theories, biological, social and cultural. And we discuss about biological and social ecological factors influence, influencing fecundity, fertility, natality, mortality. So every aspect, right? So these concepts also comes under social justice right social issues okay so these are also comes under general studies social issues right and we discuss about applications of anthropology so what different applications of anthropology do we have so we have anthropology in sports nutritional anthropology anthropology in designing of defense and other equipments forensic anthropology methods of principles of personal identification and reconstruction applied human genetics Paternity diagnosis, genetic counseling and eugenics, DNA technology in diseases and medicine, serogenetics and cryogenetics in reproductive biology, different applications of anthropology. So this is what we have in anthropology paper 1. As you can see, the most of the concepts are linked to the socio-cultural anthropology as well as biological anthropology and ecological anthropology and linguistic anthropology as well. So all the four branches were covered with a specific focus on biological anthropology right so once we study this anthropology right we'll get to know so what different races of people that have actually come so what social institutions do they really follow so what kind of society are they living in so what kind of beliefs do they have so what kind of religion do they believe in so what different theories of anthropology and what are the applications of it so about the biological aspects of individual right so everything we're gonna get to know right so anthropology paper 2 specifically focuses on indian anthropology right indian societies whereas anthropology paper 1 spoke about diverse aspects not just indian right it is generalized whereas anthropology paper 2 specifically focus on cultural anthropology and specifically indian anthropology indian societies right both primitive as well as present societies we'll see in the syllabus of anthropology paper 2 we have evolution of indian culture and civilization right you will be studying the same in ancient history in general studies right and for your information ancient history is not at all relevant for mains examination right ancient history is only there for the prelim syllabus whereas art and culture is there for the mains okay please check the syllabus before preparing so we have prehistoric paleolithic mesolithic neolithic neolithic and chocolithic everything and we have proto-historic indus civilization pre-harappan harappan and post-harappan civilizations right and we have the contributions of tribal cultures to the indian civilizations how the tribal cultures have actually contributed to the development of indian civilization right this is studied so paleo era right paleo the ancient right anthropological evidences from india with special reference to shivaliks as i told you india right we study about indian aspects right and narmada basin so we discussed about ramapithika sivapithika and narmada man the fossil remains of india that were found on indian subcontinent and we study about ethno archaeology in india right so the concept of ethno archaeology is studied survival and parallels survivals and parallels among the hunting foraging fishing pastoral and peasant communities including arts and crafts producing communities all the different communities of india right so as you can see right ethno archaeology is research technique that involves using information from living cultures right so whatever the information that we have from the living cultures that is actually taken right in the form of ethnology ethnography ethnohistory and experimental archaeology to for what purpose to understand patterns found at an archaeological site right to understand the primitive societies we take the basis of the present day societies that is what we call ethno archaeology right so we talk about the present day societies we find the patterns and we link those patterns to the primitive societies 
right, based upon the remains that were found in the archaeological sites. An ethnoarchaeologist acquires evidence about ongoing activities in any society and uses those studies to draw analogies from modern behavior to explain better understanding patterns sees in the archaeological sites. So, demographic profile of India. Demographic profile of India, right? Ethnic and linguistic elements in Indian population and their distribution. So, what different ethnic groups do we have? What different languages do we speak? And Indian population factors influencing structure and growth, right? So, structure and nature of the traditional Indian social system. Indian, right? So, in this we study about Varna, Varnashram, right? Purushastha, Purushartha, Karma, Rina, Rebirth. So, all these different aspects. In Varna, we know Brahman, Shaktiriya, Vaishyas and Shudras, Ashrams, Brahmacharya, and Grihastha and Vanaspata and Shanyasa and for Purushartha we have Dharma, Ardha, Kama, Moksha for Karma we have Ahistata, Karta, Karm, Chesta, Deva and for Rina we have Devarena, Rishi, Priti and Atiti right so what all different uh, what are all these different aspects so right so, what kind of structure or the nature of traditional Indian societal system do we have, right? So, we believe in karma, we believe in rebirth, right? So, the karma is of totally different and rebirth is of totally different. The karma is something which is happening right now and rebirth is something imaginative. We don't really know that it is happening, it is just a belief. And at the same time, we have different social structure. Right, so layered social structure, the Varna system, and we have different ashrams. Right, so the Brahmacharya, so initially uh, he has to be syllable. Right, the final, uh, finally has to become the sannyas. He has to leave everything. Right, so only then we he will be getting the moksha. Right, so Purushartha, this is uh, uh, if it is a human. So what all different aspects he has to follow. Right, so what woes he will have to take. So all these are the structure and the nature of the Indian traditional Indian societal system. And we discussed about the caste system of India. Right? The structure and characteristics, Varna and the caste, theories of origin of caste system. Right? And dominant caste, caste mobility, future of caste system, and judgment system, and tribe caste continuum. So all these aspects of the caste. Right? And we discussed about the sacred complex and nature, right? The man spirit complex, right? Man nature and spirit complex, right? So, as you can see for your, for your information, the sacred uh, the concept of sacred complex was proposed by L. P. Vidyardi under the influence of Robert Redfield, and the aspects of great and little tradition as put up Redfield was applied to the Indian context. That means sacred complex, geographical, right? So, how do you really see that place as the sacred? Right? What are the different aspects that are involved in that sacred complex? So, how the nature is actually involved? So, how the man is actually changing the nature? How everything is intertwined? Right? Everything. That is what we call the sacred complex. Right? That is studied. And impact of Buddhism, Jainism, Islam, Christianity on Indian society. The reason why Indian society is different is we already we also discussed the impact of all these religions on the tribal communities of India as well. Right? And we discussed about emergence and growth of anthropology in India, contributions of 18th, 19th, and early 20th century scholars and administrators. Right? So how it has actually evolved. Right, how the anthropology has actually evolved. So, how they are separated, how they were divided, and how it has gradually evolved. So, what were those uh, anthropological findings? So, who are those anthropologists? Everything is included in this. Right, contributions of Indian anthropologists to tribal and, uh, and caste studies. Right, contribution of Indian anthropologists, extremely crucial. Right, and we discussed about Indian village, significance of village study in India. Indian village as a social system, traditional and changing patterns of settlements and intercaste relations, agrarian relations in Indian villages, impact of globalization on Indian villages, everything about Indian villages, right? And we discuss about linguistic and religious minorities 
and their social, political, and economic status. So obviously, when you're talking about linguistic and religious minorities, we talk about the fundamental rights, right? We discuss about the constitution that will be covered as well, and social justice is covered, and social issues is covered, right? And indigenous and exogenous processes of social cultural change in Indian society, and we discuss about Sanskritization, Westernization, and modernization and its impacts. And we discussed about interplay of little and great traditions, and panchayatras and uh, uh, social change, and media and the social change, right? And we discussed about the tribal situation in India, so biogenetic variability, so different ethnic groups. The linguistic and the socio-economic characteristics of the tribal population, and as well as the tribal population distribution, right? Tribal communities. It is extremely crucial. You have to remember the names of the tribal communities and the culture associated with them. We discuss about the problems of the tribal communities: land alienation, poverty, indebtedness, low literacy, poor educational facilities, unemployment, underemployment, health and nutrition. All the aspects. we discuss about developmental projects and their impact on tribal displacement developmental projects and their impact on the tribal displacement right so you can actually see kantara movie for this reference right there are many movies which talks about the tribal displacement and injustice that is being done right and the problems of rehabilitation and development of the forest policy in the tribes impact of urbanization and industrialization of the tribal populations and we discuss about the problems of exploitation and deprivation of the scheduled caste scheduled tribes and other backward classes and the constitutional uh, safeguards so obviously indian polity social justice will be covered over here and social change and contemporary tribal societies so how the change has actually happened so what contemporary tribal societies do we have right now the impact of modern democratic institutions development program and welfare measures to the tribal and the weaker sections right so concept of ethnicity ethnic conflicts and political developments so india is of multi ethnic society it is not mono ethnic society we do not have only one ethnic group we have multiple diverse ethnic groups in all of india it is totally diverse so because of the diversity what ethnic conflicts so now this one territory if you see it is all about the ethnic conflicts and the political developments and unrest among the tribal communities racialism and demand for autonomy and pseudo tribalism right they are not tribals but they right they be, uh, they, be, uh, they act so pseudo tribalism and social change among the tribes during colonial and post independent india right and we discuss about impact of different religions on the tribal societies right we discuss about tribe and nation state a comparative study of tribal communities in india and other countries tribe and nation state comparative study of tribal communities in india right and we study about history of administration of tribal areas right so because tribal areas comes under special category status they have the autonomy to govern their own land so how tribal policies plans programs of the tribal development and their implementation right concept of primitive tribal groups the distribution special programs for the development role of ngos in the tribal development the last topic but not the least role of anthropology in tribal and rural development right and contributions of anthropology to understand regionalism communalism and ethnic and political movements in india and across the world so this is what we have for anthropology option right so how we gonna cover the entire concept is we take about 3 months of time and in this 3 months every day we'll be having one and a half hour of lecture right associated with examination so every day you will be given the questions where you will have to study and answer it then and there right then we will be discussing the answer how it has to be written right so what important aspects uh, so i'll make another video for your reference how the answer writing has to be done for the greater result right for better scoring so this i'll be covering in the next video
the skill of answer writing to get the best scoring so i think i believe you have understood what all areas are actually covered in anthropology optional right if you have any queries please put down in the comments below so that i can address in the next video thank you so much see you soon bye